Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. The Bible says that we can have power, that we can have gifts, that we can have fruit, that we can do great things, that we can live our life in victory, that we can have a counselor, a helper, an intercessor, a strengthener, a standby. Now, why would anybody just want barely enough to get by on? I want to be filled, filled, and ever filled, overflowing, and filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? You know what the word anoint means? I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with the word anoint, but the Bible talks, Jesus is the anointed one. The anointed one. And in, in 1 John, it says that we have an anointing, that we are all anointed. And that that anointing abides on us. Well, the anointing is an enabling power. It enables us to do things. And we need to, we need to treat that anointing like it's very, very precious and valuable. But if you, if you study the word anoint, here's what it literally means. To rub or smear all over with. So like if I were to anoint you with perfume... I would just take it and just smear it all over you until you just would reek of perfume. I mean, we could just smell you for a block away. You'd be like smelling like perfume. But thank God we have not just been anointed with perfume. We have been anointed with the Holy Ghost. We have been rubbed all over with the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm so glad that I'm doing this tonight because some of you are like, yeah, and some of you are like. <laughs> and to be honest, it's those that are kind of like this. You're the real reason I'm doing it. Yeah. Amen. Because it's not only people here, but the gazillions that hopefully are watching TV that just don't even have any understanding at all of what I'm talking about. Well, one of the reasons why we don't experience more of this presence and power in our lives is not necessarily even because we don't have it or it's not available to us, but it's because we don't know how to, we don't know how to have it released in our life. We don't know how to protect it. We don't know how to value it. And so we're doing things all the time that are what the Bible calls grieving and quenching or hindering the Holy Spirit. So what I want to teach you this weekend is how to value this gift that God has given you. Because if you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit. But my question to you is, how much of you does the Holy Spirit have? Do you just have enough to barely get by, or are you filled with the Holy Spirit? You need to start asking God, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Fill me, fill me, fill me. I don't want just a little bit of you. Fill me. But if you're going to pray for God to fill you, then you've got to make room for Him to live. Please don't just try to have enough of Jesus just to slip in the back door of heaven. Throw your life wide open and say, God, here I am. I have no idea what this means. I don't even know what I'm getting into. But I'm just telling you right now, I want you to take all of me and do whatever you want to do in my life. And I'm going to tell you, you don't want to do that. You don't want to say that if you don't mean it. Because once you say it, you can't get it back. Receiving the power of the Holy Spirit in your life is not about getting a goosebump or having a feeling or, you know, good gracious. Acts 1.8, and when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power to be my witnesses, not just to do witnessing. My goodness, I was on the evangelism committee of my church back when I was just as carnal as the day is long. And I was trying to go out and knock on doors once a week with my little group of friends. And trust me, I stayed behind them and I let them do all the knocking. But at least I felt like I'd get a few brownie points for being in the group and going out. And then I could brag that I was on the evangelism committee. <laughs> ah, yes, amen, I'm on the evangelism committee, praise the Lord. 
but I was a nightmare at home behind closed doors in my own house. Mad all the time and upset, manipulative and controlling and jealous and greedy and bitter and envious and full of unforgiveness, back to church on Sunday. <laughs> How many of you know exactly what I'm talking about? And you know what, to be honest, I didn't want to be that way, but I didn't know what to do about it. I didn't know what to do about it. I didn't understand that I needed that power of the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. Power to be a witness, not to do witnessing. I was doing witnessing, but I didn't have the power to be a witness in my everyday life. I don't do much witnessing now, but I am a witness. You say, you mean you don't tell people about Jesus? Well, of course I tell people about Jesus. But you know what? I think we need to, to just show people Jesus a lot of times. We need to live the life, and we need to be dripping with Jesus. We need to have the character of Jesus, the fruit of the Spirit. We need to be flowing in the gifts of the Spirit, the supernatural endowments of power that energize us to live a supernatural life. Let's look at Acts chapter 1, verse 8. I want you to see these verses. They're so good. And while being in their company and eating with them, he, he being Jesus, commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, of which he said, you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but not many days from now you shall be baptized with, placed in, introduced into the Holy Spirit. Amen. He said, now look, you wait. <laughs> you wait. Don't try to go out and start your ministry. Don't try to get out there and try to do much of anything. You wait for the promise of the Father, which was a promised outpouring of the Holy Spirit that actually came on the day of Pentecost. Well, since the Holy Spirit had been poured on the day of Pentecost, he's been available to every single one of us. Anybody who would receive him, he's ready to fill you and make your life really amazing. Come on. I mean, can we believe tonight that Jesus didn't die so we could be wimpy, and whiny and barely get when well, I'm just so I'm under the and I'm just so tired of this. I just don't know if I can make it or not, Jesus. I just <laughs> come on. Bunch of people old before their times because they, they look like, you know, they're 40 and look like they're 90 because they worried themselves to death. I mean, come on, you stay full of the Holy Ghost and you're going to look younger when you're 80 than you did when you were 40. Yeah. Let's look at Acts verse 1, at chapter 1, verse 8. <laughs> Please, look at this. But you shall receive power. I knew that God had power, but I went to church for years and nobody told me I could have any power. So just in case nobody's ever told you, I want to tell you in this room and all of you watching by television all around the world in these 63 languages this program is translated into, whether you're in China or Russia or India or Africa, you can have power. God wants you to have power to live your everyday life. Where even when we are loaded down with troubles, we can throw our shoulders back and lift our head up and say, I can do whatever I need to do through Christ who strengthens me. I am not without an answer. I am not without a way because God is living in me in close fellowship and he will show me what to do. 
If we don't understand the power of God, no wonder. Being a Christian is so boring. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm not looking for anything to do. <laughs> Serving God is the single most exciting thing. I mean, <laughs> you can be a Holy Ghost-filled spy for God. <laughs> Every day I pray, God, show me what I can do today to be a blessing to somebody else. Show me how I can serve you. See, you don't have to just sit somewhere and wait for your problems to be solved. You can let God flow through you to give encouragement to somebody, to give comfort to somebody, to love somebody, to meet somebody's need. When the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power, ability, efficiency, might, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Now, let me tell you, if you are a Christian, if you've been born again, then the Holy Spirit has come upon you. But if you don't know what you've got, then you're not going to make use of any of it. It would be like somebody being a gazillionaire and dying a pauper because they didn't know how to go to the bank and cash a check. <laughs> you got to start by believing that this power is available to you and by learning how to cooperate with the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. So all this weekend, we're going to be talking about how important this is and how to be led by the Spirit and how to appreciate the Holy Spirit and how to Go to God first and foremost before we do anything else. We go to God for strength. We go to God for comfort. We go to God for counsel. We go to God for the help that we need. We go to God for the wisdom that we need when we don't know how to solve a situation. I had, I had had the last month or so, I'd had some like these weak spells. I just would suddenly get real weak and, and shaky and feel sweaty and I didn't know what in the world was was wrong and my family was saying you need to go to the doctor you need to go to the doctor I thought I just said I want to pray about this first and of course they were you know the same thing I tell them and you know what I just spent some time with God this morning and he showed me exactly what was wrong plain and simple don't need a bunch of tests I just haven't been eating right I've been going too long without eating and then when I do sometimes, then you get too hungry, then you eat too much, then, then it overloads your system, and then I would get sleepy and feel like I just wanted to lay down somewhere and be a potato for the rest of the night. <laughs> and I'm just sharing that with you just to say that God will give you understanding about things in your life if you go to Him first. Now, if I needed to go to a doctor, then God would have said, go to the doctor, and I'd go to the doctor. Amen? I have another little situation with with my back, I've had a leg that's been bothering me for a couple of years, getting kind of numb on me when I sit. And so I think with that one, I need to go to the doctor. I think God showed me what's wrong, and I think it's an easy fix. But one of the reasons why we don't have good success is because we just run off and try something. Did you hear me? We make a plan and want God to bless our plan. My God, this is my plan. Bless my plan. We don't need to make a plan and then pray for God to make our plan work. <laughs> we need to pray first and see if God's got a plan. Amen. Amen? Man, I tell you, I got my hair colored this morning. I prayed for the girl to do it right. <laughs> I got my hair cut, and I didn't want my bangs to be too short for you guys. I mean, I've prayed over this whole deal, you know? <laughs> I'm trying to get you to understand that it's not bothersome to God for you to pray about all kinds of things. Let him help you. Begin to ask him about the answers to the things that you need. Let's look at Romans 7, verse 6. But now we are discharged from the law, rules and regulations that we think we have to follow to get to God. 
But now we are discharged from the law. We have terminated all intercourse with it, having died to what once restrained and held us captive. So now we serve not under obedience to the old code of written regulations, but under obedience to the promptings of the Spirit in newness of life. Hallelujah. Now we're led by the Holy Spirit. You know, people want to know today, <laughs> And I, you know, you, you can think I'm goofy if you want to. At this point, I'm too old to care, so it doesn't matter. So. <laughs> there is a great benefit, you know, in becoming what the world lovingly calls a senior citizen. <laughs> Dave and I are not aging, we're youthing. And I figure once you reach 70, then you get to go backwards. So next year, I'll be 69. Thank you, thank you. Now, you, now I forgot what I was going to say. Goodness. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm having a senior moment. Let me see if it'll come back. <laughs> Thankfully, we don't have to live under the law. We can be led and guided by the Holy Spirit. And you know, today it seems like everybody wants a formula, a process, a this, a that a three-point plan, a seven-point plan, you know, this and that and something else. Well, Joyce, how can I start my ministry? You know what my answer is to that? You better hope to God you don't start it. You better hope to God you don't start it because he is the author and the finisher, and he doesn't finish what he doesn't author. And furthermore, this is just me, maybe I'm wrong, but I had no idea what I was doing. And the Holy Spirit led me. And if you're supposed to be doing something, you won't need a 10-part point plan. The Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you each step of the way. He shows you something, you take a step. If you missed it a little, you step back, you get a little better direction. You take a step, it works. You take another step, it works. And then it's a you and God thing. Well, Joyce, what's your process for this? What's your process for preparing your messages? And you know, I, I wouldn't have a problem telling you, but I'm not real sure. <laughs> and as you can see, most of the time, it don't do me much good to prepare them anyway because I don't get around to half of them. But I do prepare them. I've got them. Just in case. <laughs> you know, the truth is, is I do get around to using them, but... I, they never come out in the order that I wrote them down, and I'm probably preaching some of tomorrow's stuff tonight, and I've got tonight's stuff that'll come in tomorrow. And that's what happens when you're led by the Holy Spirit. It's a little scary. And you know, that's why a lot of people aren't led by the Holy Spirit, because it's a little bit scary. We want to have it all. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> I'm so trying to preach. I tell you, I'm so trying. And then I have to take just a minute to talk about the gifts of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. Oh, my, my, my. The fruit that the Holy Spirit within produces is love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, humility, and self-control. Don't ever say again, I don't have any self-control. You may not want to use what you've got, but if you're born again, you have self-control. Don't ever say again, well, that's just too much for me. I'm going to go over the edge. No, what you say is God is strengthening me and enabling me to do whatever I need to do in life through Christ. Amen. And then there's the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I best go show you them because if I just tell you about them, that's not going to be good enough. So let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. First seven verses. Now, first of all, in 1 Corinthians 12 verse 1, it says, Now about the spiritual gifts, the 
special endowments of supernatural energy, brethren, I do not want you to be misinformed. King James says ignorant. <laughs> do you know how much of the church world at large is ignorant about the gifts of the Holy Spirit? All we do is argue about them instead of operating in them. I never even heard of the gifts of the Spirit the first 12 years I was in church. Never even heard about them. Verse 7, but to each one, to everyone, everybody say that includes me. Amen. To everyone is given the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, the evidence, the spiritual illumination of the Spirit for good and for profit. To one is given in and through the Holy Spirit the power to speak a message of wisdom. How many of you parents think that sometimes you need a message of wisdom for your children? The Holy Ghost will give you that. These gifts of the Spirit are not to get up on a platform somewhere and show out. The gifts of the Spirit are for your everyday life. They're for every believer, for your everyday life. And although different believers may be specially endowed with one or the other, might be a little stronger than life. I personally believe that all these nine gifts of the Spirit are available to us whenever we need them, God will have them flow through our life if we really want Him to. Now you see how much quieter it's getting when I talk about the gifts? That's why we need to talk about it. The Word of Wisdom to another is given a word of knowledge. Do you know that if you really have close fellowship with God and you lose an item, maybe, you're, maybe you don't even know where your car keys are at or this or that or something else. You know, you can stop for a minute and say, God, would, would you show me where they're at? Now, I'm not gonna tell you this is gonna work 100% of the time, but it's happened over and over and over. It's amazing what will happen if you begin to lean on God. To another, wonder-working faith. It's a gift of faith. We all have faith, but then there is a gift of faith that will come to us that enables us to do things that we cannot even believe that we're doing. Now, I didn't know it for a lot of years because I didn't understand it, but Dave and I have built and managed this ministry and function in it today under a gift of faith. Do you have any, even a slight idea of what it takes financially every month to say that you're on television in two-thirds of the world? I mean, that doesn't bother me at all. I have the faith that God will provide if this is what he wants me doing. Now, that didn't happen overnight. I had to grow in my walk with God, but God will enable you. And then so you, you got to be careful when you have a gift of faith for something because then sometimes you don't understand why everybody's not doing it. Because to you, it just seems so easy because you're doing that. But everybody can't do what we do. Everybody can only do what they're gifted to do. Amen? And I know many, there, there, there are those of you in here that are doing things that I could not do. I would not have the faith to do it. No way could I do it. But when God wants us to do something, listen to me, if God wants you to do something, God will give you the faith to do that thing. Are you there? You know, a lady named Kathy shared with us on Facebook how one of my books that I've not offered in a long time has really blessed her and changed her life. I'm actually gonna read you what she sent in. She said, as I was reading your awesome book, Knowing God Intimately, a book that I really love, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. My life has been amazing ever since. I'm 64 years old and I never understood that God wanted to give me this beautiful gift. You know, the wonderful Holy Spirit is our helper, our counselor, our advocate, our intercessor, and we need to be hungry for a supernatural endowment of power 
so we can live a really dynamic life. I want you to meet my buddy, Angela. She is seven years old. She's very, very ticklish. We've been able to make an impact in Angela and her family's life after a very devastating loss. You see, we're here in Zambia and water is a huge need here. Even though we are right along the banks of the Zambezi River where you think water would be plentiful, but that water is extremely dangerous. And Angela lost one of her sisters to a crocodile along the river as they were gathering water. If you can even imagine such a loss as a parent, as a sister, to lose someone that you love in such a terrible way. This is the biggest river in Zambia. So there were a lot of problems. There are a lot of crocodiles in the river. There are a lot of hippos in the river. The most affected are people, their children. Uh, I lost my daughter, cut by the crocodile. I sent her to go and fetch water. How old was she? Ten years. Ten years old? Yes. Every time we, uh, we fetch water from that side, we, di we drink it direct without uh, putting any chemical in it. As you can see, this is, these are just villages. They don't have uh, money to buy chlorine or any chemical to purify water. So uh, we had uh, uh, diseases like uh, dysentery, diarrhea, uh, waterborne diseases. We were crying for clean water. How many people would you say were, were sick from waterborne illness during that time? There were many. If you, even if you go to the clinic there, they will give you the number the people were suffering from this diarrhea and so forth. Now we are happy. We are drinking clean water. We are living a better life now. Now we are getting good water, safe water. Yes, even crocodiles are no more accident for crocodiles. We thank you very much for what you are doing. And people are healthier? Yes, very much. This ball which is set here, is not from, uh, from you. It's not from Hand of Opal itself, but it's from God himself. So they thank, they thank God for bringing hand of hope to bring all that support all the way to here. It is safe, madam. We are happy on that. And all the people now are very happy. Praise to God. God loves us. Thank you. So now as Edith and her three girls are gathering water, they don't have to be in fear. They don't have to be in fear of the dangers of the river, of the animals, of the disease that the water carries. And we are so grateful that you have been right here with us to provide this for them. It's through your love for Christ and it's in sharing that love with Edith, her girls and the entire village in this area that you are changing the world one little bit at a time.